Hello, lovely people. Hello. Hi. As you can tell, my voice is um sexy. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. And I haven't been on one of your videos for ages. Um. So partly because my voice is gone, and partly because obviously we need to have Claudia very frequently because she's fabulous. And this time we're talking about me. Oh my god, shock horror! Like my worst subject, but also kind of my favourite. <laughs> Everyone likes talking about themselves. Today's video is sponsored by Moneybox, who are going to help us to enrich our financial literacy and learn more about pensions. Ooh. So excitingly, tomorrow is National Coming Out Day and it is 10 years since Claudia came out. Oh my god, yeah. I never Which also feels... had to coming out, so yours is mine now. My coming just... out is your coming yeah, out. Yeah, so I celebrate your coming out. Oh, I see, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it feels like a long time ago, because it also feels like I've always been out, but you know. Oh, in your heart. <laughs> well, I don't feel like I was ever like hidden. I only felt like, like I needed to come out when I realized something needed to come out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> You mean like when something new happened? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't like I was It wasn't like, like there was a secret inside that you just didn't share with exactly. the world. Exactly, it was like, oh, figuring myself out. Oh, I'm gay. Okay, guys, I'm gay. I remember learning the first time what the word lesbian meant and being like, there's a word for me. Oh. Today what we're gonna do is go on a fun exploration of Claudia's style journey. Oh my god. Since she first came out. Yeah. This is fabulous. Um, I do have to say we are missing some of the... Did you get photos pre-meeting you as well though? Or were they all like... Came out before I, I know. Okay, you. so you have that time. I've only yeah. known you for okay, eight that's years. Fine. All right. <laughs> Just checking, because uh -huh. I feel like Jessica had a big influence on my style choices at some point in my life. We actually have a video where we look at photos of ourselves as children, and you can watch it by clicking the link in the card here. By the way, I've not seen which photos she's even selected <laughs> for this, so whatever reaction I give is quite authentic. This is Claudia in the year 2012. <laughs> what have I done to my shoulder? <laughs> Semi dislocating her shoulder on the motorbike. Yeah, it's like popped out. Um, I have to say. I actually remember having a look at that photo and I thought, God, I really like myself in that photo. <laughs> Other than the shoulder, I quite like you in this photo. I remember I was dead set on getting those aviator Ray-Bans. Like, I was like, I have to get these sunglasses. Actually, throughout my childhood and like, well, in my teenage years, I'd get really dead set on a certain type of sunglass because I knew like that would represent <laughs> me. If I couldn't quite get my clothes down to a point, my sunglasses would sum it up. And it is kind of true, because what sunglasses you put on your face, I think, tells a lot about a person. Can I ask, is this a dress? No, I'm wearing shorts. It's just a long black loose top. I think it's top. called the early noughties if it's 2012. Was <laughs> it 2012? <laughs> I'm just trying to like, make excuses for like, that was so long ago. <laughs> I think that was when I started, well that was in Malaysia, this photo, and it's hot and humid and I had to just embrace how my hair was, which is what I do now. But I think back then I was only just starting to learn to accept my hair, because before that I was like chemically straightening it and stuff, so I guess like I was on the path to becoming more me. Because this is what you looked like in England. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that's that bad. I've got the like layered necklaces going on. Uh huh. Trying to do that kind of, you know. I feel like your hair is, is secretly screaming, help you me. <laughs> Oh my god, well I used to style my hair with just like pure coconut oil in the bottom to try and like accentuate my curls because I was like, okay, I've moved away from like straightening Wait, my hair. What are you talking about? I used to put pure coconut oil in it to accentuate my curls. Yeah. Because I'd moved away from straightening it. Yeah. This is a pure lie. Look at the top of your head. I hadn't finished. And tell me. I hadn't finished my description of how I did my hair. I would use pure coconut oil uh -huh. that you'd have to rub in your hands and mm. melt it because it literally was just like, I mean, you buy a it. A block, it's a block. You buy it in Malaysia and it's like a lovely liquid, like scented with frangipanis <laughs> or whatever, or jasmine. You bring it home and it's like this block of wax in like this like bottle and it's like, oh. And you're just like, just get it out with some hairpins. And then because I'm a bit like, you know, can't be bothered with that. You don't it's just like, you don't fully let it actually melt. And then you put it in your hair and obviously like, why do I think it's gonna stay in that slick kind of, it obviously just solidifies once <laughs> it reaches that cold temperature again. So yeah, I'd rub the bottom of my hair, which I always had an obsession with being frizzy, I still do, with uh, coconut oil, like. But then with the top of my hair, I'd get my straighteners out. <laughs> 
<laughs> and straighten them because I hated like this bit of my hair and my baby hair is going all frizzy. But then I'd have to like stop before it got to the bit where I wanted it to be kind of curly. And then it was just, it was a, yeah. You were still straight? I guess to your I, so friends? I had, yeah. I don't mean straight, but like. To, like I hadn't announced I was gay. Inside, I think I knew I wasn't straight. Um, I was watching the L word, like in secret. Hidden under a duvet. Yeah, I was reading like all the Sarah Waters novels. I had like all my artwork in my bedroom was of ladies bodies and like legs, artistic, tasteful ones. Were your friends just so straight that they didn't yes. pick up any of these signs? Well, at, yeah, most of them, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They were just like, yeah, Claudia only listens to lesbians. I think now. I told mm. one of my friends at like a Christmas, like um, dental party, that I was gay, that I thought that I no, that I was gay, but I was like I'm absolutely off my face. <laughs> but I didn't I... remember the talk until I told her later, and she's like, you told me this already. I'm like, oh, did I? Oh, okay. So sorry. <laughs> Apparently, I told quite a lot of people at this point. So I did tell quite a few of my close friends, but whenever I told them, I was very drunk, and it was always like, I think I might be, you know. Uh. Oh, uh, and now this look. Okay. I, I just had to include. Can you explain this to me, Claudia? Well, I'm I'm fully out at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's a year later. It's a year later. I've decided that to be out, I have to also be cool. <laughs> <laughs> I had the uptown collar. Uh huh. The photo in itself has like you know it says quite a lot because <laughs> many the, filters. The, the light <laughs> is from above. Like I'm just opening to this new realization, like a light bulb. Boom. Um, but it's only exposing mm, half of mm. my face and the other half of my entire True. body, in fact, is very much in the dark because that's kind of how I felt at the time about this whole world and community that I was entering into and of myself. Yes, I'd come out, but now where do I go? Did you have gay friends? Were you part of a gay no, community? I had, I had no gay friends. Any queerness in your life? I had a girlfriend, but that was it. Like, um, she had some queer friends, but they were all older than me. She was older than me. Like, um, that felt kind of cool and like but I wasn't it wasn't like my own little tribe I guess I felt quite like alone actually mm. yeah like I'd left this great group of friends this like strong identity within that you know on the surface level and now I'd come into this thing where I felt like better in myself because I was like had been more true to that but also like kind of a bit lost still 2013 yeah so this is because I'm on holiday with my straight friends. I see. Yeah. So I think I was still very much like who I hung out with, whether it was my girlfriend or my friends, I would, it did influence what I wore. Because this is a very flouncy summery dress here. That's very like red. It's a bright color, mm -hmm. um, which is interesting. As we get to her current wardrobe, you'll be like, goodness, she wants more red. <laughs> um, it's got a pattern on it. I do feel more it. confident to start wearing some brighter colors. I mean, I bought this cardigan. It is a tone of rust. <laughs> it's not okay. black or gray or navy. Yeah, it's rust. Um, <laughs> and you're wearing what looks like sandals that have some kind of decoration on, is that right? Oh, and now just, just because, um, <laughs> Halloween is uh, is coming up around the corner. I remember feeling uncomfortable, but also quite liberated in this outfit. Interesting. Yeah, like my girlfriend dressed me for one, oh. so uh, it wasn't. So I felt like quite like. Well, she obviously, she knows. I was accentuating parts of my body I don't normally like to, like I was wearing a, like a waist, whatever that is, corset thing. It may be a waist trainer. It's very hard to tell. Yeah. This has got a lot of filter and on it. And a shirt with puffy sleeves. I'd whited my face up and I was wearing vampire contacts to look dead, like, like a- Yes. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, I wasn't making myself look like youthful and putting blusher on. Whereas I'd never like dressed to look intimidating before. No, that pink cute dress dress, not pink, the red the one. red pink, yeah. cute dress, that was not intimidating. No, so this outfit was very much like, I've come out and I'm a completely different person. <laughs> I've, got some, I've got some power, I'm gonna play with and it, again, see what it happens. And again it reflects back on that, what I was saying earlier on about how I was maybe in that slightly darker, lost, lonely place. At the time I felt like I was like dominatrix. 
like high femme. I was wearing really high heels. I actually went to a sister of uh, my sister's friend's party um, where they're all like high femme, like, and butch men, like, very yeah, hetero. Your sister, your sister is yeah. very high femme. It was a very heterosexual party. They're all in fancy dress, like, that accentuated, like, heterosexuality, basically. And there I was with my girlfriend, looking like, we were both looking like sexy, but like in a non-inviting way, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Which was, like I say, it felt quite liberating because it was like, I could look how I want to look and I can still accentuate my womanness, but without it being about male attention. Today's sponsor is Moneybox, an award-winning saving and investing app. And today we're going to be talking about Pensions! Yeah, I know. Did you just think, oh, this doesn't apply to me? Maybe you're also thinking, I'm young. I'll think about this when I'm older. Well, future you wants to have some stern words. Pensions matter to everyone. Don't make the mistake of thinking that something which could really help you in the future oh, just doesn't apply to you now, purely because you can't allocate funds to it right this very moment. While it can be daunting, taking control of your personal finances is important, no matter what income or tax bracket you currently find yourself in. After all, in a society that teaches us to be insecure and anxious from day one, radical self-love is a rebellious act. And how do we show that deep and abiding love for the beautiful being who lives inside of us? With a freaking pension to make sure that we're taken care of in our old age. My idea of rebellion is in itself rebellious. Now, when it comes to retirement, I know that as a disabled person, I have to be realistic about how many working years I may have in me. Oh my god, that's really morbid, but bear with. <laughs> yeah, it's really important to me that I work as much as I'm able to, when I'm able to, without exacerbating symptoms and still making sure that I have lots of family time, in order to take care of future me who will be less able to. Early retirement, baby! For less than fun reasons most people. But it's really important for me that I have a figure in my mind that I stay on top of saving money and I track how much I still need to be inputting. Where else can I make a saving put it into my pension instead and let future me have the fun? So how does Moneybox make us feel pension positive? Well, with Moneybox you can start taking control of your retirement savings and working towards a comfortable retirement. Thinking about the future isn't always easy, but it's certainly one less stress in my mind knowing that I have a plan in place. Moneybox helps you to achieve your financial goals, from saving and investing, to buying your first home and planning a retirement you can look forward to, all together in one simple app. The idea is to help you set and achieve financial goals with just kind of greater confidence. If you too would like to start feeling more pension positive, simply scan the QR code right here and download the app. And if you're already on your phone and therefore you know, can't scan that QR code, don't worry, there is a link in the description down below. If you're watching this and feeling guilty, anxious or overwhelmed because you don't yet have a plan, then please don't. The future can be overwhelming, but preparing for it in the present is the key. My favourite thing about Moneybox is that they are focused on empowering us all to take control of our own financial situations by helping us to track old pension pots and helping us know exactly where we stand with our pension savings. Now, we know there's a lot of uncertainty in the world right now and that saving for retirement is unlikely to be top priority, but, and I really agree with this, it's so important to take control of our finances as early as we can so we're as comfortable as we can be down the road. After all, retirement might look very far away, but the longer you're saving for, the smugger you'll be. Just think about that. You can be really smug with Beryl in the retirement home. <gasps> oh, wait. Old ladies are gonna have our names then. You can be smug with Rachel in the retirement home. Uh Taking control as early as possible can make a big difference to achieving your goals. Again, scan the QR code and download the Moneybox app to get started now. It's easy to use and has lots of helpful content and tools to help you plan for the future with greater confidence. You'll be feeling pension positive in no time. And then we come to a very special picture. Are you ready? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> With the fluffy scarf. <laughs> 
Yeah, but I'm basically it's... wearing Walter on my <laughs> neck. I often joke to Jessica that Walter was actually the love of my life, and that's how, like, you know, if she didn't have Walter, I wouldn't have like bothered with her. I just really. I'm wanted... just the adult. I just really wanted to see Walter all the time. <laughs> And he really wanted to see me because I'd go around and take him for a walk. I mean, thank God we've got a child now because what on earth Look could happen him. if Walter, you know, Look how trim wasn't he here anymore. There's a lot of straightened hair here, mm -hmm. you can tell. Mm -hmm. Now, these glasses. Yeah, the glasses were not quite not, right. They're not you, no. are they? No, no, a bit too femme. Yeah. Around the neck. Unclear as to what this feather bow is. I mean, I think it was probably just quite cold. <laughs> And I itch with wool. Why do you own this? I still hadn't let go of like my straight style, and like I emulate a lot of like what my friends wear, what my sister wears, um, and obviously hanging out with those kind of people is like that's what gets the compliments, and that's what gets because it's like what they know as well and what they like. And if I wore anything different, it didn't always get those kind of like validation from those people in my life because, like you said, I didn't have a group of queer friends or you know people who dress differently to the crowd that I already hung out with. So it was hard for me to like step out into an area of unknown. Oh, hello. This this is a this is also a look. This is one of the first pictures I ever saw of you. <laughs> yeah. I've now no longer using hard coconut wax <laughs> that dried onto my hair in clumps. I was now using like actual hair oil, like Moroccan oil and Very things like good. that. Stuff that is sold in our country. <laughs> and intended for use in this climate. And didn't make me smell like some kind of like Indian dessert. <laughs> Tasty though. Tights. I'm wearing tights, yeah. You're wearing tights. And is this a sweater dress? It's a sweater dress with a belt. A sweater dress with a yeah. belt. But I'm starting, I felt very much like I'm starting to feel more like me. So this isn't something that my like old friends would have worn. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe the sweater dress, but not in that kind of way. Not with the boots. And not with the boots. The boots. I got Doc Martens. I went there. Yeah, she I did. did it. Yeah, she but did. I got them with the ribbon laces. The ribbon laces. Just to <laughs> hold on to that little bit of femininity. Uh-huh, uh -huh. I definitely remember feeling quite comfortable, a bit more uh, comfortable in who I was. I mean, you I was less... really made it onto a haystack. I was less scared. <laughs> I was less scared of like appearing maybe slightly different. I know I don't look different. I look like a standard girl in a jumper dress. But to me, it felt like quite a move to be wearing those Doc Martens. I mean, God, what am I wearing? <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, this is 2015. I think I took this photo. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, we're on a beat. I'm clearly quite feeling quite free. <laughs> I did not think loads of people would be seeing this photo when it was taken. <laughs> I loved that t-shirt. <laughs> it was like a really thin, worn, distressed t-shirt. But the neckline is not right. I wouldn't wear something with that neckline now, but at the time no. I remember feeling it, like it did show the top of yeah, the top of boob. It did. And then a little bit of like a little cleavage. And then I was wearing it with this skirt, which I remember I really loved. And Jessica had to really encourage me to chuck that out. I was like, I don't like it. But I don't know why I liked it. It's rust. It was puffy. Yeah, it was rust. That's why I liked it. The fit was just wrong. Like it, it like puffed like a tulip skirt, but then cut off at mid thigh. <laughs> like it was very bizarre skirt. So I had it for years. I think I had that when I was going out with my boyfriend. I think, <laughs> yeah. At one point, I was like, look, you have to get rid of clothing yeah. that you have had now. That's for... the thing. I think this photo reflects <laughs> for ten years. This photo reflects that I didn't. Yeah, I came out and I was trying to like re-identify myself, but I wasn't like maybe like projecting that into the world because I still would wear all my old clothes. In hindsight, it would be good to just chuck out a lot of your clothes, if not all of them, you, and you just start You also say, fresh. wear them. You just kept them. Like 95% <laughs> of your wardrobe was things that you'd had when you were straight yeah. that you did not wear. And then 5% of things you just wore every single day. I guess maybe that's like, when you say it like that, I think I was probably like, I was probably a bit scared to like let go. Yeah, you kept five pairs of heels. Oh well, yeah, because. For years and years and years like, and years and years. Well, I might need them for like an event. Like I might need them for like, if I go to a party or a wedding. Um, we went to a wedding yesterday. Hi, Jamie and Sharper, congratulations. Yeah, Love we had you. such a nice time. And I did wear my heels. And For an hour. Uh, they were the only heels we could find that fit me in this house. 
were my wedding shoes that <laughs> Jessica now wears. So I literally don't own any heels now. And it was so silly because like, it was a queer wedding, you can wear what you want. It very much said that on the invite. And yet I still felt this social pressure to wear like, heels and a dress. So I wore a dress, which I had bought recently and I felt very comfortable in it. But like, I wore these heels with it and I just felt, Jessica was like, yeah, it really goes. It goes like, it completes the outfit. But I just felt uncomfortable. And I think because I felt uncomfortable. So that I've changed in my vans. Yeah. And I felt so and much better. And it was fine and great. <laughs> and I looked better because I probably looked more like me. Yeah. Hello, who's this cutie? This is the era that Claudia will say her clothing started to be defined by me. It was. I mean, you just said, who's this cutie? <laughs> When you looked at it, like she's smiling at me so cutely. How can I, I was not just madly say in that? love, and I just wanted your approval. I've always lived my life wanting other people's approval. Well, so. I was madly in love with you and wanted your approval. Wait, what the hell times. is that necklace I'm wearing? I did not. Oh no! Wait, your sister gave me that necklace. <laughs> that was a present from your sister to me. Okay, and then it's I. It's okay. And she doesn't watch our videos. And then I and then <laughs> I wore it. Whatever. Well, I obviously would like it enough to wear it. I remember. You did. I remember that skirt. I got it from like. Um, TK Maxx, it was a Calvin yes. Klein, it was like a pencil skirt, it went down to sort of mid-calf. I remember feeling quite like similar to how I felt when I dressed like that vampire in this outfit. Dressed by your girlfriend. Dressed by my girlfriend. <laughs> so approval by a gay person, so it must be fine. But also, I loved that it was like suit material, like male suit material. I liked that it was a pinstripe skirt in like this like business kind of authoritarian style. To me, that was like, I'm no longer this girly girl. Interesting that the vampire look was also a take on a suit. Mm -hmm. We're learning so much. Where are my eyebrows? Yeah, that's another thing that we should probably bring up. Claudia's makeup has changed quite drastically. Yeah, I mean, literally, the only thing I'm wearing there is eyeliner. It's a lot of eyeliner. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. A lot I mean, no eye. one ever, I've always had a problem with makeup. No one's ever taught me how to do it. I've never had enough interest in it to find out how to do it. <laughs> Do like, I actually sit down and learn? I, I hate having my makeup done. Like if I do get a makeup artist doing it, I'm just like, yeah, just get on with it. I don't take in any tips or like tricks. So to be honest, I have... like I wear a bit of like, I, I get- You like, look amazing. Oh, thanks, yeah. I'm wearing some lipstick. Like, yeah. I'm wearing a bit of mascara. I don't do eyeliner anymore. But I've learned from looking at previous pictures of myself. It does <laughs> nothing for me. I now also draw on a bit of eyebrow because my eyebrows are quite pale. I just darken them up a bit. When I first met you, you used to wear really pale foundation. Yeah. Again, probably because I was just like, what foundation do you wear to my <laughs> to my white friends? And they were like, I wear this. And I'm like, okay. And I'll just go Excellent. to the shop and buy it, but in like two shades darker and be like, sure, that's <laughs> me. <laughs> must be me. Oh, look, it's Claudia at a wedding. Looking really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I started this, drawing some eyebrows. This was on. also to show the makeup. Um, you didn't actually do this makeup, honey. We had Did a <laughs> makeup artist. <laughs> to be honest, when I look at these necklaces, and even when I was wearing them at the time, I felt like I was just like emulating my mum. So I think I was just trying to find some style icon from like my mum's choice. I have seen pictures of your mum, and she was a style. She icon. was a stylish <laughs> lady. <laughs> Intriguing. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh! This is on our honeymoon. This is. <laughs> I obviously look very happy. I hope so. I was living like my best life, but I'm wearing like dangly pearl earrings. You are. Which I wouldn't actually refuse to wear now to a wedding. <laughs> to a wedding. <laughs> I wouldn't wear them day to day. That'd be bizarre. <laughs> I wouldn't. Wear, I'm look. I've gone. I'm still insisting on wearing eyeliner. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was a shirt dress. I'd yes, started, it was. I started to move on to like, if I'm gonna wear a dress, I wear like a shirt dress. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. like this because it was like feminine, holding on to my like, what I knew I was comfortable in. It was kind of like what I knew Jessica liked me wearing. Something about a shirt dress makes me feel more comfortable mm -hmm. than any other type of dress. It was a good look. Shirts? You went through a phase of shirts. I did. I've still got those bloody sunglasses. <laughs> the same ones I was wearing with like Walter. This is the thing about me. I don't get rid of things unless like <laughs> someone tells me, don't wear those, they look shit on you. Or they break. My handbag, oh my gosh. Claudia at this time was still carrying a handbag. You know, what I thought made it better was like better being like not too high femme was that it was like a big slouchy bag, like an over the shoulder big slouchy bag, made it therefore a not so feminine bag compared to like a little hand held bag. 
Oh, oh. hello. Suddenly, what happened? Yeah, <laughs> we had a transformation. I bought myself some different jeans. <laughs> this was the year 2017. Claudia discovered a pair of jeans in TK Maxx oh. that were boyfriend cut. Yeah. And she loved them so much, oh, we had to go back the I next only just day. stopped wearing them. I've still got, buy yeah, we've got another them. pair of the same size, so she'd have two and they'd last I wish I'd bought like four pairs, because both these pairs, see there, they, didn't, they had knees. And they're like, it's baggy, but they've gone like, clearly like slouchy bum from wearing so much. Yeah. They did make me so happy. Yeah, I felt really like my true self. I loved those jeans. I, I still these do. these jeans were a turning point. They were a turning you. point. And look at my hair. It's just natural. I haven't run straightening irons through them. No. I'm wearing my gilet. Yeah. A fleece gilet. That was another thing. I like bloody loved it. I felt really happy and confident, confident in it. And yeah, like I knew if I'd worn that even two years earlier, I would have been like ridiculed by my friends and my sister for wearing like a fleece gilet, like how uncool and like not fashionable and who wears that except for old ladies and old men who go fishing, you know? But I was like, but I really like it. It's practical, it's warm. I think it looks pretty good. I like a gilet. Yeah, your little uh, barber scarf there. My barber scarf. Yeah, I was embracing my, my country my country sorry you know upbringing but teaming it with a bit of like tomboy vibe yeah i was feeling Back really to cool your true childhood yeah. self leading on from that mm -hmm. dramatic change in your clothing we have 2018 oh yeah oh she's stunning she's got her camera out <laughs> She's rolling up the sleeves of her t-shirts. Yeah. I've got like my leather wrist, like male oh, sort of yeah, you've style got your watch. watch. Yeah. Um, oversized man's t-shirt. I think it was like a, a, a t-shirt and a small. Yeah, that was the thing. We went to Malaysia. Yeah. This is after we just come back from Malaysia. We went to Malaysia and bought loads of men's t-shirts. Yeah, I decided now was the time to actually change up my wardrobe. Yeah, I think I like, my hair was just like natural. Love your hair um, in this. I think you can't see, but my glasses are different. They're just like smaller framed, less girly, just like, you know, unisex kind of glasses. And this is Claudia, but smart. <laughs> yeah. I think this is quite a good look. I'd wear this still. Absolutely, I think you should. Yeah. I mean, the white trousers, um, I think they're okay. It all depends on the cut. It has to be a good enough cut. Can we focus on the face? Look at this face. Look at this amazing makeup job. Yeah, it's doing much better. The barest eyeliner has gone. Damn, I really like your hair dark. Oh, like I miss natural. my like. I miss your you natural, miss my hair. natural hair. I like the like, you know, your highlights in it, do you not? No, obviously not, you just said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, no, I mean, I, I have been liking it. But now I'm looking at pictures of your natural hair and I'm like, I know, my hair's so dark naturally, isn't it? Oh, I really like your natural hair. Oh, I think I felt more confident to go to a store and pick out ladies' clothing, but the right type of ladies' clothing for me. I see. Oh, this is from the same trip. It is from the same and trip. And again, I think this is, this is the sweet spot. Is it? Of wearing women's clothes, but in With quite a, like a... Yeah, I like those trousers. I still have those trousers, because of course, like, you know, if they're not broken, I don't. <laughs> like. Look amazing. I think they make my bum look nice. They I do. think they like make my waist look nice. And like a you know, they highlight my feminine body but also in a like masculine way. I think that's basically how I feel confident in dressing. So we've skipped ahead to the year I was pregnant. Ta da! Oh, 2021. This is such a cute picture. Flea chalet. Oh yeah, I gotta love that fleece chalet. Boyfriend cut shirt Absolutely. from Malaysia when we did the big like you gotta re do your wardrobe. Boyfriend cut maternity jeans. Walking boots. Brown leather walking boots. Yeah. I think we did a like whole thing, a lookbook about it and we about did, how- oh, we did, yeah. Yeah, and about how- You can watch that. Uh, and how I felt like I didn't have to feel pressured into wearing a frilly dress. Like, even though a little bit of me was like, should I wear a little frilly dress? And in the end, I did actually buy a polka dot maternity dress, which is what I said like was like the like- Not what you were going to Stereotype do. pregnant woman outfit. <laughs> But it was so comfy. By the time you get to the size of like a baby about to give a baby, a birth, a baby. About to give birth to a baby. A woman about to give birth to a baby. You need to wear a dress. And then, oh yeah. post baby. Yeah. 
I look better here than I do now. Yeah, glasses are much better, love them. I think they broke, I was very sad about it, but I've replaced them with pretty much similar ones. Wearing no bra, confident enough to just like go braless. My lovely jeans, got even the fly button undone on that, relaxed. <laughs> Like old lady sandals. I don't care. I'm comfortable in them. I think this is what I've grasped in the yes. last few years. I don't really care so much what people think. Because I'm like, well, if I feel comfortable in it, I know I look better. And I think what's also helped a lot with that is there's so much more photographic evidence of what I actually look like now than there was. Because like of our job yeah and i also get validation from like all you lovely people on instagram but also i wouldn't post it on instagram until like, unless i felt comfortable in it yeah i think i look less to external pressure and validation but i don't know if that just comes of age as well like i think coming out is a is a continual thing mm -hmm. it's not to say i have completely figured myself out right here right now to say i know all that I am and all that I ever will be is X. Mm -hmm. Because that's just not the case. People grow and people change. Yeah, I listened to a really interesting podcast on uh, Guardian Science Weekly, which was about bisexuality. And basically the woman who was talking about it was basically saying like everyone she believes everyone and, and I fundamentally believe as well. I think I believed it before I listened to her podcast. Everyone actually is probably on the bisexual spectrum, but because we're all on a spectrum of sexuality. Um, but because of like... Bisexual here, inclusive of all genders. Yeah, just like, uh, not one way or another, like just like, you know, the middle ground, basically. Um, and we're just, because of culture and gender, gendering and norms like that, we've been like, uh, you know, we have to identify as one thing or another. And I, you know, even I have fallen into that. I felt like, oh, uh, I'm a straight, I'm a straight woman. Um, oh wait, no, I like women. Oh, I must be, I'm a gay woman. And then I came out and I told my friends, I'm gay. And I, th I told myself I was gay. But actually, you know, as time's gone on, I'm like, well, I had a boyfriend. I loved him. We had like, I had a sexual relationship with him. I wasn't like repulsed or anything. And I still find men attractive now. And like over the last like couple of years, I've thought actually, I don't think, I don't think I feel like so aligned with like, I'm a lesbian. Like, I don't know if that really defines who I am. But then also at the same time, I'm like, I don't really need to like know what the name is. Um, and like coming out isn't just like, I've come out as this thing. To me, I came out as like a gay woman because it allowed me to like mentally and emotionally move to a place that was far from where I was already and for other people to recognise that that's where I was at. And for me to recognise that's where I was at. But now I'm comfortable enough in my relationship to be like, actually, you know what? Maybe I'm more like in the middle. What about the word queer? Yeah, Jessica asked me this <laughs> earlier on, like, how would, would you identify with the word queer? And I was like, I think the word queer is too cool for me. <laughs> I just think it's so sweet. I just think like, it's like... She's like, no, no, it's too cool. Yeah. I'm not cool enough to be queer. I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't feel cool enough to be, to say I was queer. Like if I met someone and, and like, I was like, oh yeah, by the way, I'm queer. Like, I feel like an imposter. I was just trying to like, jump on some like, into some community and like, claiming some kind of lifestyle and culture that I'm not. I think many people use the word queer uh, as a shorthand for the LGBTQ plus umbrella. Oh yeah, I know. Therefore, we are queer. <laughs> no, now I, now I think, yeah, I probably, I would probably say I'm queer. I don't feel uncomfortable saying that now. But, but yeah, when I a separate identity. But when I came out, I would have felt uncomfortable saying that. So yeah, it's always a journey. The point of this is that, I don't know what is the point of this, other than just like ridiculing my life, my <laughs> outfit No, dresses. no, no, no. The point is embracing your true inner self. Yes. I think you now wear outfits that like young Claudia would have been proud of. Mm. I think we're our truest selves when we're at the age of like eight. Yeah, that kind yeah, of where we're not thinking age. about what other people think of us. Basically before puberty hits, yeah. 
when we're just like core personality. Mm -hmm. The years in between, she was like, what the hell? <laughs> I know. Yeah, she, what have you done with your hair? What the heck are you doing with your hair? What are you straight this down? What is that dress? Yeah. Whether they're straight or gay and it doesn't even have to do anything about your sexuality or coming out, like I think fashion and style is a constant coming out of who you are mm. and just who you are as a person, you know, what your interests are, what you like, whose style are you choosing to follow? Like, are you following your friend's style? Are you just like emulating people? Or are you being yourself? And like, you know, sometimes that will change day to day, week to week or year to year, like depending on where you are in your life and how comfortable or not comfortable you're feeling in yourself. And look, what's actually really inspiring, obviously about Jessica is that she's always been oh. so <laughs> unapologetically herself. She always has such strong, authentic style and choice. And she's never once like wavered on it. Apart from that one year of being one in like dressing oh, yeah. like what you thought should be a lesbian. When I was like, <laughs> oh, I am a lesbian, must be lesbian, okay. So again, you had like thought yeah. that probably goes through my head all the time throughout my life. You had for like one moment. <laughs> must fit narrative. <laughs> yes. Provided by society, okay. But yes, otherwise I'm just, uh, it just well, it makes me happy. Which is what basically everybody should do. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you've really enjoyed Claudia's style evolution. Let us know in the comments down below. Which Look, outfit did you like the most? Was your favorite? <laughs> Doesn't have to be the best outfit, just which was your personal favourite? Which one tickled you the most? Hmm. And thank you so much to Moneybox for sponsoring today's video. Click the link in the description to find out more about them and start your own pension journey. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.